Proverbs chapter 30, verse number. Oh, let's pick up with it with the prayer again. This is a lovely prayer, chapter 30, verse 7. Two things have I required of thee, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Least I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? And least I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Hagar. What a prayer that we all should have. What is the meaning? And you don't need to run to a dictionary for content. Paul speaks about being content. There's, there he is right there, verses 7 through 9. But you know what? You may not like what God gives you. That's not being content. Accuse not a servant unto his master. Least he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. See, that's reading Philemon. When you read that letter about a runaway slave, you can't find no accusations in that letter. He says, well, you know, he left for a season. He's saved now. Here he is. Let him dwell with you for a lifetime. Or, you know, I'd rather have him for the ministry, but, you know. You and get off the word with servant. If you want to bring it up to date today, what about employee employer relationship? Accuse not a servant, all right? I'm not changing the Bible but, uh, today. Accuse not an employee unto his employer. Least he curse thee, and thou shalt be found guilty. Yeah, you know, there are some people who will lie about somebody that you know in a in a, in a business for whatever motives. And the Bible says you're not to do that. It's between an employee or servant and an employer or the master. Yes, the Bible speaks about slavery. And yes, the Bible sets rules. And yes, down south, there were brutal, brutal slave owners. And there were some up north, too. And the brutality probably would be that's under the cover. They would bring the black man into the white man's church, to the white man's God. Ooh. They were fed, weren't they? They they kept they were kept alive, weren't they? They were able to pick the cotton. I mean, they weren't bruised or entreated and, 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 and served with rigor. And we forget that the Bible speaks about the colored man mistreating God's people in Exodus. All right, verse eleven. It's funny how we get to this prayer of his. Verse 10 is a little note about servitude and masterhood, and then, boom. Why is that there? I don't know. There is a generation that curses their father. No. There is. And this was a generation probably going on agars. There are always rebellious children. For all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. In Romans 1, that whole entire list there in the very last verse, and they enjoy or they like. 
the sins. They curse their father. Some don't even know their father today. There's a generation that curses their father. So if they'll curse their father who they'll know, they'll curse the heavenly father who they have not known. And does not bless, make happy their mother. For every one, male or female, that's in the correctional system, in the prison all over the world, in the prisons all over the world, they have a mother. And you talk about a mother's love, they are in those prisons for a reason. And if that mother's any right mother, she is not happy. She ought not be happy when she knows that her child curses the father. Because when they curse the father, they're breaking down the law of God set by God the family. God, Jesus Christ, the man, the woman, and the children. If they curse the father, they've broken the family. Mothers, if your child curses your father, they have broken the family. They have become unchristlike, if they were even Christ. And it, they are not to make you happy. They have sinned. They're the generation that are pure in their own eyes. without God or of God but it's a small G-O-D I don't care where you are stop at a church any church and start witnessing to about the Lord Jesus Christ and know oh I haven't been murdering anybody I, I'm I'm okay I'm not bad that's pure in their own eyes. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. You may say you're clean. You may say you're not a sinner. You may say you're a good person. But in the eyes of God, when he looks down and sees your heart, he sees vileness. Listen, when God looks, looks down upon man. He sees the heart and he sees either the blood of Jesus Christ or he doesn't see the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees them either sealed in the spirit or not sealed in the spirit. Some he sees are sealed by the spirit and got a filthy heart. And there are people who go walking around, I'm okay. How many people do you think heard Noah's preaching and said, ain't going to happen, I'm okay. God is the God of love. You think Lot's wife thought she was a good person? She, she ran with him. The religious ones of, of Jesus' time that he dwelt with thought they were good. Okay. You don't think so? Ew, look at Jesus. He's sitting with the publicans and the sinners and not with us. Ew. Why didn't you wash your hands before you eat like we do? Because we, you know, we're, we're number one with God. And God's over there at the market, over there at the marketplace. Look at him like, no, you're not with me. <laughs> the sinners and publicans are with me. You are not.
So what do you think when Jesus said, as the days of Noe, so shall be the days of... All right, so we got cell phones and automobiles. What makes us different from Noah's time? They had horsepower just like we do. Horse-driven, two horses, three horses, maybe four horses, up to six horses. Only difference between them and us is if their horse broke down, they probably couldn't fix it. Likely chance. But if you could fix the horse, like you could fix the car, it would be costly. The veterinarian became an auto mechanic. Nothing new under the sun that we're going to be getting the next few books. Men in the time of Noe rejected God like men today in Daytona Beach and in and, and, uh San Francisco and Las Vegas and Montreal and, and Italy and in Australia and Asia and Africa and all over the globe reject God. And they think they're doing okay. When they built that Tower of Babel, let us make a tower that goes up to heaven. They thought they were doing great. There's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. Oh, if we could build this tower, we can set up this one good government of the people, for the people, and by the people. If we can set out a standard for our race of people, if I can climb that corporate ladder all the way up to the top, if I can get every electronic cell phone that comes out, the I-100,047, and be the first line at 2 o'clock in the morning to get the stupid thing. If I can have it all. Food, fame, parties. If I can get the most trophies. And their eyelids are lifted up. You know, looking up. Not to God. I think they say it's the pig that can't look up to God. A pig can't look up. I advise a whale can't look up either. And yet a whale can't look in front of him. A whale has no eyes in front of him. Whales are reptile kind of fishy thing, you know. Under that, that missing that missing cherubim. The swine is unclean. It's looking up without God. You know without God produces. It produces children that 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 do not act normal. A normal child will love his mother and father. Will seek the best he can do. He will draw that picture in school for mom or for dad. He will not like when somebody talks bad about one of his parents. We have a curse of our parents, of the mother in particular, that is a profane, perverted curse of two words. Of two words that shouldn't even be put together. I'm, you know, I'm definitely not going to say the two. And we have come to a place where a, 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 a employee-employer relationship has been broken by money and greed. And people who look up 
not to God, but look up to careers, goals, money, anything of that which is of holiness. You say, well, that's today. That's the same it was in Noah's time, and that is the same it was in the Tower of Babel's time. That is the same that was in the time of Jesus. Demas, did he leave Paul because I'm going to go start some churches, Paul. Will you lay your hands on me? I, I have a burden for some cities and, and, and areas that we cannot go unless we split right now. No, he loved the present evil world. He set his eyes up to whatever it was. And Paul says it was worldliness. Lofty their eyes. Let's get all, let, let's build a mega church. Let's have more people. Let's have programs. Let's have notches on our belts. And let's not do it God's way. We'll baptize you. If you pull up an apple in your mouth, you'll get the free prize to whatever flags amusement park. We take our, our, our teenage kids everywhere but knocking on doors and going out in the street preaching the gospel. We take them all to entertainment places. If our eyes are not lofty today, why are there malls? Where you go to a mall and you pay more money than you do elsewhere. And that mall would not be in business if people weren't paying the extra money if there were no lofty eyes and you went to the grocery store all the shelves would be lined with unnamed products the store brand, or even a cheaper underfile brand. There would be no brand name at the excellent price of all the prices on the shelf of that area. Because if your eyes weren't lofty, you wouldn't pay the extra amount of money for where you could get it for a dollar cheaper. And see, lofty eyes come from appetite. You don't see that undefiled name that's a dollar cheap. You see that big name that's on that big boob tube. The television. The liquor zine. What you don't know what liquor zine means, that that's a magazine with all the liquor at it. you go look at here, oh, I can't have butter unless I have this butter. When you spend your money more than you should, that's loftiness and that's foolishness. You will give an account to God. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives. Adolf Hitler. And how many did he kill? There are two men, I'm not going to mention their name, that are running around America and causing all kinds of racial tensions between blacks and whites. And with their mouths, destruction. With their mouths, insurance companies get nervous. Yet they, those two don't do nothing. But the people that are under them. There are men and probably women in Bible cemeteries. Bible cemetery to me is a Bible seminary. Who will get up at that podium 
And what they do to the Bible are teeth or swords and jaws or a knife going through there, cutting out and subtracting and adding to the Word of God. And let's see what this great man that we've been reading about says in verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not to his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. There are people, according to this passage, by their mouth, People are injured and they are killed by what they speak. You know how people are going to be injured and killed in America soon if it's not already happened? I'll give you name, I'll give you words, I'll give you Obamacare. You wait to find out when you get an ailment, you go you go to your doctor and they check your form and check it twice to see if Obama's been nice or not. And listen, I've already heard testimonies. That is not covered. Oh, but if you want an abortion, that's covered. Okay, yeah, we will cover that. But wait till you go try to get the prescription to help what you got. That won't be covered. If you can't afford it, we'll charge you by the IRS. And then you won't be able to pay for the treatment. Uh, and I know where the missionary the other night said said in church that where he was and area was there was a minister who had cancer and just because the foulness of the of the medical system there he just had to die waste away the cancer and, and they tried to help him brothers and sisters in America ra 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 that's where your medical system's going to. And your voting put that guy in office. <coughs> you're voting. Well, I didn't vote for him. I don't care. You're voting. Put that guy in office. That's where we're heading to. A king in England had the right to say if your neck would be attached to your head. There were some kings in the history of of England, that their wives would, their heads would be beheaded for whatever reason. Didn't even have to be a particular reason. He would order the execution of his wife, and he wouldn't be the one that did it. The Roman emperors in the Colosseums would go. And if you got the thumbs down, kill them. You don't have to kill in the Bible and be charged with murder. Like I said, I don't know how many people Adolf Hitler himself killed, but brother, all of them will be charged to him.
someone in America will be charged with all the deaths of brothers versus brothers and fathers versus sons and sons versus fathers in the civil war that struck this country. And they probably never set a foot on the battlefield. To devour the poor from off the earth. That's happening right now in America. That is a process that is now in the works. But it has been worse all worldwide. This one great religious organization such as the Catholic the Catholic who has entrapped the poorest of poor and people like in Mexico <coughs> by using fear. <coughs> Excuse me. They use fear. Fear of mom, dad, son, daughter, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle will never leave purgatory unless I give money or do whatever I have to do. Religion goes after the poor. Makes them poor. If you don't believe that, you haven't read the scriptures. Paul speaks about it. Jesus speaks about it. Especially with widows. There were laws set in the New Testament about widows. And the fatherless. Why? They were easy prey to the government. Who cared about them? And the needy from among men. So there are generations that are spoken about. It's just pure wickedness. And they're all over the world. They've been throughout the ages. And the Lord tarries, they'll be even still in the future. Even worse in a period called the Great Tribulation. I don't think this is going to be in the millennium. And this is definitely not going to be in eternity. All right, verse 15. I got to giggle with this one. Can I have a little fun? The vampire has two daughters crying, give, give. You say, Brother Hayward, you, you, you haven't checked out the Bibles. You haven't checked commentators in their in their books. Because the books I checked to find out what this horse leech is. Vampires. Arr. I'm going to tell you what a horse leech is. Okay? Because there's a bunch of people out there who wrote stupid things. So I'll tell you. You ready? I haven't got the foggiest idea what a horse leech is. It's not in the dictionary. There is no word today that matches horse leech. Now, if you take horse and, and put a, a space in leech, <coughs> oh, that's, forgive me, I'm going to tickle in my throat. It's a blood sucking leech, something like that. That's the closest I can find. You break the words down. And it may be attached to horses. Now, the horse leech has two doors. Oh. That makes it a little harder, okay? I mean, I think those little parasites have more than two doors. But. The horse leech. Kind of interesting, but I would figure that Agar knew what he was talking about. 
And when we get to heaven, we can ask the Lord God of all the important questions in all the world. God, what on earth was a horse leaf? Agar? Who's Agar? <laughs> yeah, you see? You know, you know who Agar is. All right, the horse leech has two daughters. Crying. Give, give. That sounds like a Christmas time, doesn't it? The horse leech has two daughters. And they cry, give, give. With cash or master card, give, 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 give. There's one of those songs that, that the Christmas song. Oh, what is it? Uh, uh, I'll be home for Christmas. Make sure there's presents under the tree. I, I said out loud last night. What? You want me to pay for them? Everybody was giggling at work. I like to. You bring presents. Put that right there. That verse. Now we're going to go into an interesting thing about with this horse leech. We're going to go into a wonderful thing of looking at things. So, a horse leak has two doors. They say, give, give. The government says, give, get, take, take. There are three things that are never satisfied. I guess this is like a horse leak and his daughters. They're not satisfied. Yea, four things are not. To say not, it is enough. Okay, three things, never satisfied. Four things, they say it's not enough. Like this horse leech. The grave. That's interesting. You ever have a graveyard come up and have a sign say, no, sorry, we're full. Well, you know, they usually buy a little more property. Back where I come from, the, the graveyard there, they have a bridge across the highway. We want more, it says. The barren womb. The one that has the womb that has not produced a child, she cries out like Hannah to the Lord, I'll give you it, my son, if you will feel, fill my womb. Give me more. And, and great pain that a woman gets, and it's a wonder that she has more. never enough as much as God will will give me children and as much as God will give my husband a paycheck keep them a coming <clears throat> you know how many children Mary's womb produced one holy womb and she produced Jesus Christ and his brothers and sisters and I, I said that only, I meant to say Eve. I said Mary, I meant Eve. You know how I many children Eve has produced in her womb? I am a product of Eve. I am a product of Noah's wife. It's not impossible, but it's impossible, but I can trace my lineage to two women. Joan of Arc, ha ha ha, and Eve. And there are two babies being born. And there will probably be babies born in the, in the eternity. <coughs> the earth that is not filled with water. In the time of Noah's flood, can you just imagine Earth? Not too much water down here. 
No. It, you know, God could have had the waters fill the entire universe. And the earth would say, okay, keep it coming. And yet God puts a bound upon that. You know, when we go down to the beach, that bound is set by God. You ever thank God for that sandy beach? Because God says that's as far as you can go. If it, if it goes any further than that, God's causing a flood. Number four, fire. That says, not is enough. You know, fire will could, if it would, burn the entire earth and come back around for the new growth. How long has been hell been burning in the center of the earth? You ever, you ever think about that? We don't know how old the earth is. We know how old man is. But what about the earth? And even that great ice age between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2... Hell was still burning. So what are the things that say it's not, not enough? Grave, death, the barren womb, life, water was a judgment, and fire will be a judgment upon the earth later on. Death and life and judgment and judgment. That's a message in itself. The eye that mocketh at his father and despises to obey his mother. We're taking a little break here again. Now we're going back to children again. Verse 15 has something to do with the generation. Death and life and judgment and judgment is coming! Agar is preaching that God will burn people in hell! Don't preach hell! God, take a Prozac! Agar did! He says, a wicked generation has come and there is death and judgment. Now, back to those who are going to sin even more. The ravens of the valley shall pluck it out, and young eagles shall eat it. Now, to the Oriental, to us, I don't care where my body is. My body won't be where it is. It'll be with the Lord when I die. But to have your body laying on the ground for, for animals to digest themselves and enjoy you as an appetite is a no-no. It is a shame. As is a shame to mistreat your parents. And God said even the law, and Paul backed it up under grace, if you don't treat your parents right, you're not going to have a long life. And the law says, you don't even get the inheritance of the land. You match verse 17 with the generation that there is. There, is a, there are people who mock their father and disobey their mother. You're going to get death. We'll go back to again. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. This guy, is, he's honest. I'm going to tell you some things I'm going to write about. I'm going to tell him I have no idea what they're about. Like I can tell you and write about the horse league. I have no idea what he's talking about. This is what he, this is what he can't understand. <clears throat> the way of an eagle in the air. 
Well, science knows all about the ego today. Yeah, but you don't know about hell. You don't know about God. Agar does. So shut up. You're so stupid, you think you came from a monkey. You think the monkey one day picked up electric shaver without electricity and shaved all his hair off and waited for how many years for his wife to show up. At least Agar knows God, and at least the Holy Spirit knows Agar, and they don't know you. So shut up, you and your science. Agar would look at an eagle and say, wow, that's a beautiful bird. That, how does he do that? That's one of the questions he had for God. God, how, how, you know, he looked at the eagle and said, you know, God made that eagle. How do you do that? It's all about God. A way of a serpent upon a rock. Have you ever wondered about that sentence there? What's he talking about? Well, I've seen a centipede. I see a millipede. They got all kinds of legs. That snake does not have no feet. How does he move? With no feet. On a smooth rock. How'd he get up there? I don't know. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. So he doesn't know the natural creation of God. And there are some mechanics that he don't know. If you were to take a transmission and put it right here in my living, I say, "Yep, that's a transmission." And then take, fix it. <laughs> yeah, right. You gotta be kidding me. Okay. And a way of a man with a maid, a virgin. Exodus 22, 16, Deuteronomy 22, 13, 17, Amos 2, 7. He looks at some couples and say, Her with that guy? What on earth does she see in that guy? And you look at that guy, and you look at another guy and a girl, and you say, He is with her? You ever, you ever see two people and you look at them like, what on, how on, what, wow. That's what he's saying. How did they, how did those two get together? How, what do they see in each other? Such is a way of an adulterous, I love this one. Such is a way of an adulterous woman. Okay, we know what an adulterous woman is, right? She's committed adultery against her husband. She has slept with somebody who is not her husband. Ready? She eateth. Did you know what an adulterous woman eats? Let's say cereal. She gets up in the morning, she's having cereal. And wipes her mouth, she has a little milk, she takes and wipes her mouth. And saith, I have done no wickedness. I'm just like anybody else. You know where to you know where to run your verse on that one? Verse twelve, there is a generation that appear in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. I've done nothing wrong. You know, adultery and, and, and murder were the two sins under the law that there was no sacrifice, there was no forgiving outside of David. This wicked person who will be going to hell. I did nothing wrong. There's no shame. There's no blushing. Can you see this woman sitting at the table, at the dinner table, with pork, with with a potato, and with 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 a, a vegetable, sitting across from her husband, eating her meal, wipes her face, looks at him, and says, "I nothing wrong." Are you leaving tonight, dear? 
You're going to take your bag. You know what I'm talking about? You need to go back to the proper store. You taking your bag with you, dear? You are? You're going for a long while? Okay, I'll clean the bedroom. I'll smoke it with cinnamon and all that. Okay? Right? When are you coming back? All right. Bye. Oh, baby, I wanted you so bad. Come on. Let's come into my bedroom. We'll, we'll spread our loves. All right, bye. You have a good day now, dear. You enjoy your day at work. I'll have my cornflakes. Mm, I've done nothing wrong. Huh? Doesn't that fit Proverbs? What we've learned? And you need to realize when you're witnessing to people in the public, there are people that have committed sins, are an act of sin, and they wipe their face and say, I've done nothing. Don't be fooled by their statement. Dig in. Find out. Because sinners only need to apply to the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For three things the earth is disquieted. And for four, and for four, and for four, which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth. You mean when you put uh, Cana as a present? Uh, forgive me. When a man who 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 he who will bow down to another man as servitude will be the ruler. But we read the other night about a guy who will bring up a child from servitude and be likened to his child. A fool when he is filled with welfare. I mean filled with meat. Excuse me. Agar will look at the American system of welfare and sit there at the grocery store and say, What on earth is going on here? A bunch of lazy fools filling their shopping carriage up. And there is a U.S. veteran over there who came and fought a pack of hot dogs. Who what? Who doesn't have a home? You know, there's a few people you don't want to visit America. You don't want Agar to come visit America. You don't want David to come back and visit America. And you sure don't want Elijah and Moses to show up to America. Never mind the father and father. Let's, let's bring Bible people. Jonah would come to the shores of America and say, uh, Excuse me, Mr. Whale! Please come back! I am definitely not going to preach to these guys! Hey! Alright, I'll take Jaws. I don't care. An odious, offensive woman when she is married. And a handmaid that is hair to her mistress. She's not in a relation. She just takes care of the woman. She, she's her female servant and she becomes part of the inheritance. You know, when they read the will. And we're going to stop right there as we're running out of time because I don't want to quicken any of these. But these are just great things. I may come back and just redo this section again. I don't know, Lord willing, see what we'll do. But he, he's looking at life and saying, Question. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Question. You know what he wants you to do? You know what Agar wants you to do? He wants you to think. He wants you to search God. You know, the next book is exactly what Solomon does. We're getting prepared for Ecclesiastes. See, Agar is not just a fool. He's a man that, you know, he searched God. I 
believe he's going to be in heaven. 99%. He's going to be there in heaven. And I don't even know what time frame he's living. I don't know how old he is. I don't even know who he is. I may go up to glory and just walk around, get a tap on the shoulder, and say, "Hi, how you doing, sir?" Yeah, how you doing? And just want to say that was a that was a great message you've done about me. There you are. Yep, that's me. You told the people who I was and what I was. I didn't tell them anything about you. Exactly. You told what just the Bible said, and that was it. Now let me go meet you. Let, let me go bring you to Jabez. <laughs> you know, the people write those books. And all, you know, we already went through Jabez. I told you exactly what I know about Jabez. What the Bible said about Jabez. I'm going to tell you exactly. This guy is what the Bible says here. He's a servant. He is not afraid to say, I don't know. And when you're witnessing to people, you need to be like Agar. You need to tell the truth. You need to open their eyes. You need to show sins. And you need to say, if you don't know the answer, I don't know. He would not be welcome in a, in a, in, in a Bible cemetery teaching the Word of God. Professor Agar? Yes, my yes, my child. I have this question about the Bible. No, he would just say, "I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that question." If you give me some time, I will search and find the answer if I can, Lord willing. But if you ask me a question about how a snake moves on a rock, I'll tell you exactly how I know. I don't know. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> 